Hello and welcome to part one of this mini series. If you are new to my channel, my name is Stephanie and I was a zealous new ager for seven years and I was heavily invested in new age teaching and doctrine. And if you have not yet watched my testimony video, I will leave a link to it down below. However, by the grace of God, three years ago, I came into the saving knowledge of the truth in Jesus Christ. And since the point of my salvation, God has revealed to me just how great the deception is behind the new age movement and exactly how Satan is using it to further promote his agenda. This is what I'll be showing to you and revealing to you in this video. Satan and the entire kingdom of darkness is working tremendously to forge deceptions all throughout the world to keep that blindfold wrapped tightly around people's minds and their eyes, keeping them ignorant from the truth and the reality of who Jesus Christ is, and instead fostering the same lie that led to the fall of mankind. These lies are strongholds in people's minds that are ultimately keeping them so blinded and having them believe that what they are practicing is the real love and light and truth and the highest path to spiritual enlightenment. In this video, I will be exposing the New Age lie refuting it with God's truth using none other than the King James Version, of course. And then I will be revealing to you exactly why Satan is interested in promoting this lie. So let's get straight into this video. I recommend grabbing a tea or a coffee. We will be here for a little while, so get comfortable. But I hope and I pray that this will be worth your time. The doctrine of reincarnation. So we are given multiple lifetimes, even an infinite amount of lifetimes, until the cycle of reincarnation is broken. Although it is true that our souls are eternal, we are given only one life in which we have the free will, whether to accept or reject the gospel, which determines where we spend our eternity, heaven or or hell. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 states, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment, God will not force himself on us against our will. Sin leads to death, and if we die without having our sins remitted through the blood of Jesus Christ, then we will spend eternity in hell. So what is Satan's goal? In the lie. This ultimately cultivates the false idea of second chances and takes away from man's urgent need to repent and get right with God. Truth is subjective and is completely dependent upon an individual's interpretation and personal experience. We each have our own truth of what works best for us and best defines our reality. Truth is absolute and it is revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ, who is the embodiment of truth. Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. The word of God is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus makes an exclusive statement when he states that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is not a truth. He is the truth. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John chapter 1 verse 14. Two views that oppose each other cannot both simultaneously be true. For instance, if a Hindu believes in reincarnation and I as a Christian believe that it is appointed unto man once to die, then this breaches the law of non-contradiction. They cannot both be true at the same time. If truth is subjective, then there is no valid argument to say that 
killing an innocent person is wrong or that the sky is blue or that I'm wearing a brown jumper right now because in this worldview everything is a matter of personal opinion because absolute truth does not exist which we know is evidently false. This lie aims to deceive the masses that they are in a position of authority and freedom to define truth, which encourages people to feel comfortable in their sin and adopt beliefs that suit their own worldly pleasures and desires, as opposed to seeking absolute truth and eventually coming to the cross of Christ. This way, people are more likely to gravitate to teachings that make them feel good as opposed to teachings that accurately reflect reality and the urgent need to repent. Religious pluralism. There is a merit of truth in every religion and therefore all paths lead to the same place and point to the divine. Our entrance into heaven was brought by Jesus Christ alone. He was the only perfectly sinless man to exist and his sacrifice upon the cross was made the perfect atonement for our sin. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given among men whereby ye must be saved. Unless ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So this, of course, means that if any religion does not teach the need for repentance, you can know that it's wrong because the, one of the first things that Jesus started teaching was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repentance is so vital to salvation. We need to turn away from the wickedness of this world, turn away from sin and the things that displease God and start loving the things that God loves. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no saviour. Since each religion seems to give their own answer to some of the questions that trouble mankind, it gives off a deceptive illusion that each of them must hold truth, and therefore there can't possibly be just one way. Satan has created many counterfeit religions to confuse mankind and hinder them from following after Jesus by making it more challenging to discern which is the right path to discover spiritual truth. However, let us take comfort in the fact that God has promised to reveal himself to all those who truly desire him with their whole heart and are seeking the truth with the entirety of their being. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 says that, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. God is an impersonal force with no intellectual or moral agents. God is a personal being who has a mind, a heart and a soul and revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. Whilst he walked this earth, he had conversations with people. He was raised up in a family. He had a job. He had friends. He was born of the womb through a woman. God has likes and he has dislikes. He has things that he loves and he has things that he hates. God loveth a cheerful giver. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Not only is God personal and relational, however, the very fine tuning and complexity of the design of this universe proves the existence of an intelligent creator. 
everything is so intricately designed to support life on earth that if you were to change one thing we wouldn't be here for instance if the earth was one degree closer to the sun we wouldn't be here satan wants to eliminate the personal and relational nature of god if people can perceive god as a force rather than a being then he can encourage people to consider god as someone or something that can be controlled and manipulated in accordance to our own will and personal desires, a force that can be tapped into, which opens the door for Satan to introduce even more deception to the life of the individual through deceptive supernatural experiences. True enlightenment comes from looking within and awakening to the understanding of your own personal power. You do not need to surrender to any God, for the true source of divinity is within you. True enlightenment comes from understanding the gospel and receiving the spirit of God, also known as the spirit of truth, within you. As you begin to read God's word, he begins to remove the blindfold off of your eyes and you begin to wake up to the reality of who God actually is who you are in him, the truth about the kingdom of darkness, and also you get insight into what's to come. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Trusting in yourself and refusing to accept God's authority only leads you further away from him. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Satan desires for people to consider themselves as God, to acknowledge their own authority and turn to themselves for redemption and purpose. He does not want people to look toward God and recognize his authority and power. Rather, he encourages people to put themselves in the place of God and cultivate both a lifestyle and a mindset independent of God's commandments by rejecting God's authority People live in the absence of the fear of the Lord, ignorant of the consequences of sin. The type of people that are most vulnerable to this deception are those who have been in situations that have made them feel unworthy, helpless, and in a lack of control, and are ignorantly deceived, along with those who do not want to live according to God's commandments and prefer to make their own rules. Ultimately, Satan wants people to abandon God's divine authority and live according to their own standards, leading many to hell. Heaven and hell are merely a state of mind. Man creates his own heaven and his own hell based on his personal vibration, his mindset, his choices and thinking patterns. Heaven and hell are eternal dwelling places of our soul once we depart from this world. Heaven being everlasting life to those who have accepted Christ and hell being eternal punishment for those who have rejected him. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And they shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal and when it talks about the righteous, it's those who have accepted the Lord because we're not righteous. We're only made righteous because of Jesus who has atoned for us and who now dwells within us. So it's not righteousness of our own works. It's the righteousness of God that was imputed onto us when we received the gift of salvation. By removing these core doctrines about reality from people's awareness, Satan can deceive people into being heavily concerned with the temporary affairs of this life and not concerned about where they will spend their eternity and the importance of having our sins remitted. 
God wants people's mind to be set on this world, as opposed to the one to come. He wants people to be carnally minded, absorbed with the affairs of this life, money, wealth, happiness, success, and status, as opposed to their need to repent and get right with God before they leave this earth. This is what leads many to hell. Man has no objective moral obligation other than the laws of karma and what one personally perceives to be right and wrong. God has revealed to us an objective standard of morality in the Ten Commandments. God is the divine lawgiver who has also written the law in our hearts, which is why we can know for certain that murder, rape, lies, violence and cheating is wrong despite subjective opinion which through the work of the law written in their hearts their conscience also bearing witness god has clearly revealed to us the difference between the eternity that awaits the redeemed and the unredeemed know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god and they shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal. For a new ager, truth is subjective. So in their worldview, morality is merely a matter of personal opinion. However, we know that within our conscience, that is just not true. For instance, a murderer who killed an innocent person merely for their possessions may have thought that this was a great idea However, we know that this is objectively immoral. This also supports the existence of God because in order for objective morality to exist, then there needs to be an objective moral lawgiver that is above humanity. Satan takes pleasure in promoting sin and witnessing people take pleasure in a sinful life, making choices that break God's heart and ultimately lead to death. He does not want anyone to fear God, but rather he wants others to live in accordance to their own pleasures and desires, regardless of how hurtful, wrong or violent they are. The only sin that exists in this world is one's ego, a lack of acceptance towards others and ignorance of one's own self-divinity. Sin is any failure to conform to God's perfect morality in act attitude or nature as mentioned earlier god's moral law has not only been revealed to us through moses in the days of old but it has also been written on our hearts we are not to define our own morality but look upon god's perfect morality and we need his help to overcome sin sin spiritually defiles us and separates us from god which is why jesus came to be a perfect and eternal atonement for our sin and reconnect us back to God. Satan's goal is to pervert one's understanding of sin, acknowledgement of sin and our transgression before a righteous and holy God is essential to salvation. For we cannot obtain forgiveness of sin if we do not admit to God that we are in need of it. Satan wants to popularize the idea of a type of sin that requires no need for atonement. He wants people to think that they have only sinned against themselves or others as opposed to the one and only true and living God. He does not want anyone to acknowledge that they are a sinner in need of a saviour and therefore the idea of sin is often taboo in the world of new age as it imposes guilt and shame which is almost zealously protested against in the world of new age. We are the master of our own reality and can work with the laws of attraction in the universe to manifest our dream life simply by vibrating at the same frequency of what we desire. The law of attraction and of manifestation scientifically are not laws. In order for something to be classified as a law, then the effect needs to be produced 100% of the time that the right conditions are present. Rather, many times, despite all of our effort to meet all of the right conditions, things just simply don't work out. However, most of the time, it can just help us to think more positively and just be a little bit more cautious about the types of words we are choosing to 
declare over our life because as we know life and death are in the power of the tongue to practice the law of manifestation or attraction is to engage in sorcery which we know is a sin against god the idea of manifestation is so heavily focused on materialism and carnal things whereas god says beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after christ love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of god abideth forever for the love of money is the root of all evil god governs all things in creation however he delegated satan certain power satan owns the kingdoms of this world and he can choose to whom he delegates blessings just because we receive something we want does not mean it is from god god brings us the things that are in alignment with his will for our lives and will never result in our destruction whereas Satan brings us the things that will keep us distracted and further away from God. Often, he will bring connections into our life that will lead to more trouble than we began with. Satan wants people to be carnally and earthly minded. He wants people to have their affections set on things below and not things above. The material world is so temporary, and if he can get others to idolize a life of material comfort and pleasure, then it can keep them distracted from seeking an authentic relationship with their creator and instead chase wealth, status and fame. The use of crystals for healing, manifestation, advancement of psychic abilities, relief from tension and anxieties and spiritual protection, to name a few. Although crystals themselves are created by God, the use of them for supernatural reasons results in committing both the sin of idolatry, for it teaches one to place a created object in place of the creator, and sorcery, as it teaches one to manipulate the supernatural to meet their own desires. Satan wants people to replace God with different created objects. Satan often uses occultic objects and practices to engage with mankind and bring them into the kingdom of darkness. He wants people to depend on anything other than God. And for those who gravitate towards mystical spirituality, he will promote the sin of idolatry and sorcery through crystals, even giving people false experiences that further cultivate the deception of crystals having power as Satan's kingdom operates in the unseen. So let's not forget how strategic Satan is. They work together. So yes, there could be a spirit of fear that's hovering over you and you could carry with yourself a crystal that you believe will give you more calm. So naturally, Satan or whatever unclean spirit is operating in the unseen that's oppressing you in your life, they can retract and give you a little bit of relief temporarily to make you think that that crystal is actually doing something but it won't be long until it just comes back again. Jesus was a mere man who was self-realized. He achieved Christ consciousness and came to teach humanity to do the same. Jesus is not separate from the Christ. He is the Christ and anyone who denies such a fact is antichrist. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Jesus was not a mere man. He is the God who created all things. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. 
Satan wants people to believe that the church has it all wrong, that they're foolishly serving a man as opposed to themselves and their own power within. This is another way that Satan promotes personal godhood in unbelievers and keeps them away from salvation. Man is taught that he is his own redeemer and saviour, sending many straight into an eternity in hell. By separating Jesus from Christ, Satan wants to dethrone Jesus, removing the significance of his deity and allowing man to adopt his title instead. Transcendental meditation is a highly beneficial tool, for we should not attach ourselves to our thoughts, but rather learn to merely observe them. God has given us rational, logical and critical minds to navigate our understanding of truth and be able to communicate, think, reason and understand. We are not to be passive, but active in psychological warfare. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We are to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Meditation in itself is not a bad thing. Meditations of the heart are discussed in the Bible and we are to meditate on God his character, his word, his laws. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Our mind is the battle plane in which Satan uses to reach our heart and distort our beliefs. We are to be on the offense of thoughts that are contrary to God's truth and that internally go against our God-given conscience that God has embedded within us. If Satan can stop you from a healthy reaction toward evil and things contrary to the truth, then he can put you in a position of passive existence where you never truly seek God and repent from wickedness, something that is incredibly dangerous. Follow and trust in your heart. The Bible is clear that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. We are to be led by the Spirit of God and not by our heart. Because the heart is deceitful and is the centre of desire, Satan wants mankind to trust in the leading of this fluctuating source. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Our hearts are rooted in the things that we treasure, meaning the heart is rooted in the things which we choose to place in, of great importance in our life. And if we are not rooted in God's word and allow him to shape our desire of holiness and righteousness, then we are bound to desire carnal things and fulfillment of the flesh. In order for the world to ascend into a higher dimension and experience true peace, we must all foster unity consciousness, put our differences aside that cause division and separation and instead be tolerant of one another's beliefs. We need to do this in order to ascend globally into the fifth dimension of consciousness. God values unity in his church, the body of believers who are now one in him, for he is clear that we are to be of one accord, of one mind. For if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. However, this does not apply to the lost world. God is very clear that there is a strong distinction between his church, which walketh in the light, and the rest of the world, which walketh in darkness, in the shadow of death. And yes, of course, we are to minister unto others and evangelize and to love our neighbor However, we are also to stand firm on the truth 
and walk according to God's ways, which are very different to the ways of the world. Love does not always mean tolerance. For instance, if I truly love someone, then of course, naturally, I'm going to hate the things that are destroying their soul. One of the things that Jesus came to do was to separate the light from the darkness. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And by that, he means division. And of course, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is truth. And that is what divides people. That is what divides the light from the darkness is God's truth. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And of course, this doesn't mean you don't minister to others, you don't share the gospel. This is talking about, especially in terms of marriage, what fellowship hath light to do with darkness? You'll notice that if someone is truly saved, then it will become vexing to be about to be around worldly situations and you are in the spirit. So you want to glorify God. You want to live according to the ways of God's morality. And it's just very hard to do that if you socialize with friends who are still in the world. Eventually, Satan wants to unite people under a one world system also known as the New World Order, where there is a global spirituality, a universal banking system, and a universal government. This false mentality is cultivating the rejection of exclusive Christian beliefs and replacing it with inclusive desires to bring everyone into subjection of this master plan by the elites, while simultaneously making people believe that it is the solution to human suffering, war, and other negative elements of human existence. The age of Aquarius. According to certain astrological teaching, we are currently transitioning from the Piscean age of knowledge and scientific advance and heading into the Aquarian age of spiritual enlightenment and harmony on the planet. This shift will induce a mass spiritual awakening where there will be no more poverty or war. The world is soon destined for destruction as God is going to destroy all wickedness and evil for good and create new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, also known as the holy city, the new Jerusalem, a place where God shall wipe all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. However, this new reality will only be available to those who have accepted the gospel and have been redeemed. It is not a place prepared for those who have rejected Jesus Christ as Lord. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Those who anticipate that the new age of Aquarius will bring global peace safety and harmony, are ignorant of God's plan to destroy wickedness at his second coming. Satan does not want people to be warned about God's impending judgment on sin and the destiny that awaits the unredeemed, because if people were truly aware, they would repent immediately and get right with God. Rather, he wants people to think that the world is only getting better and the utopia that they are waiting for is coming. He wants people to unite under a global system that will come in the name of peace and safety, but is really just setting the stage for the coming of the Antichrist as prophesied in the Bible. True salvation comes from being liberated from limiting beliefs and awakening to your divine self. In the Old Testament, salvation was a word used to describe deliverance from a negative situation. For instance, when God delivered the Israelites from the bondage in Egypt. However, in the New Testament, salvation is the free gift that God has given us through the death of Jesus Christ, which has provided atonement for our sin and redeems us from eternal punishment in hell for all who repent and believe the gospel. It is a gift of God's grace. 
Satan is promoting the idea of a works-based salvation, that salvation is a result of human effort, which is contrary to the gospel. We are not saved based upon how good we are or how much self-awareness we have, but how good God is and the price that he paid to atone for our transgressions. This concludes part one of this mini series. If you are still watching by now, I love your hunger for the truth and for being engaged in this video. With so much deception in the world, it is so important that we are properly rooted in the word of God, which is the truth, and allow God to sharpen our eyes to see the deception. How are we supposed to see the lies within the world if we do not spend enough time studying the truth? If you are not yet saved and you're watching this video, I encourage you to repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ. Believe the gospel. The time is running short. Jesus is coming back soon. And I will leave a video down below on how you can obtain salvation if you need more clarity. And if you are a believer watching this video and you find yourself practicing any of the things that I've mentioned in this video, then please repent. You're going the wrong way eradicate these lies out of your life and return back to Jesus, return back to the truth and allow that to define your life and how you live it. We are so blessed to be redeemed by God, sanctified, washed clean and sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, the spirit of truth that enlightens our minds to all the truth in the world. And all God asks is that we have the hunger for it and that we search for it with our whole heart, sticking close to him and allowing him to be our guide and allowing his word to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Stay tuned for part two of this video. If you have not yet already, subscribe to my channel. I'm only very new here, but I'm so excited to create more content and click that notification bell if you do wanna be notified when part two comes out. Other than that, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was a blessing to you and I shall see you in the next video. Bye!